This is Freedom Global News. Academic Staff Union of Universities express readiness to call off industrial action. Kazana Emirate Council cancels Idil Kabir Daba. United Nations International Children's Fund approves Sokoto State for social protection programs. This is Freedom Global. And on the foreign scene, an attack in northwest Burkina Faso kills dozens of civilians. This is Freedom Global News. after Hijri. And now the news in full. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has expressed readiness to call off its nationwide industrial action immediately if the federal government signs the negotiated agreement. It could be recalled that ASU on February 14th embarked on a strike to press home its demand, including the government's investment in the nation's university infrastructure and payment of members' salaries through the recommended university transparency and accountability solution, UTAS, among several others. Speaking during an interview on Channel's Television's Politics Today, on Monday, ASU President Professor Emmanuel Osudeki said the union is awaiting for a positive response from President Muhammad Buhari's administration. Osudeki said, as far as ASU is concerned, the strike can end tomorrow. The ASU leader also accused the federal government of not taking the aggrieved lecturers serious. The reason, he explained, was responsible for the prolonged industrial action. He also said that the government has failed to pay the striking lecturers their salaries for the past five months, noting that the tool used as a blackmail to punish the university workers will not work. On Monday, the ASU strike action entered its 140th day, with the union and federal government failing to reach an agreement for the overall good of the Nigerian student. Kazana State Emirate Council has announced the suspension of Derpa during the Eid al Kabir festivity on Saturday. The suspension was announced in a statement issued today in Kazana by the Council's Assistant Secretary, Al Haji Sule Momman D. He said that the suspension was due to the current security situation in the state. According to Mamandi, the Emir Al Haji Abdul Mumin Kabir Usman expressed deep concern over the security situation in parts of the Emirate and said he would only attend the Eid prayers on Saturday. He explained that the Emir advised Muslims to come to pray for the to continue to pray for the return of peace to the state and country in general. A security expert with Green Horizon Institute said the security force must be visible and accessible to the public in order to tackle the insecurity in the country. A lecturer with the Faculty of Law Barrier University, Kano, was the chairman of the institution, Professor Muhammad Tabiu, and a senior advocate of Nigeria, stated this at a one-day workshop on traditional justice and community policing for stakeholders in Kano. Professor Mohammed Tabi noted that security forces must understand the community's concern and work together with them. Community policing is the way forward for security, peace, and order in our society. And in simple terms, what it means is collaboration, partnership between the law enforcement agencies, such as the police and the people in the community. It's only when they come together that uh, they can work proactively to look at uh, the causes of insecurity and disorder, design ways of addressing them, and take responsibility together. So this is what uh, Green Horizon Institute that organized this meeting is advocating. The Emir of Kanu Al Haji Aminu Adu Bayero, who was represented by the district head of Kumbutsu local government, Al Haji Adu Kurawa, said the Kanu Emirate will continuously partner with security forces in order to tackle the incessant insecurity issues. Correspondent Abu Bakr Tijani Rabu reports that civil servants, civil societies, traditional rulers, and security forces attended the workshop.
Another sport in Arena Super Falcons head coach Randy Waldrum said his team needs to increase their urgency in the fight in spirit after losing to South Africa at the 2022 Women's Africa Cup of Nations last night. Mohamed San Oba has details of this and other sports updates. Randy Waldrum also said that the Super Falcons of Nigeria need to go back and regroup ahead of their second game after the Banyana Bayana of South Africa won his team 2 1 in their Group C opening game of the 2022 Women's Africa Cup of Nations in Morocco. The nine time champions came into the match against South Africa as favorites, having won the competition more than any other country in the continent. Meanwhile, some football fans in Nigeria have expressed disappointment over the Super Falcons' poor performance against their South. South Africans opponent at the ongoing 2022 Women's Africa Cup of Nations. The result was similar to that of 2018 WAFCON, where Banyana Banyana beat Super Falcons 1-0 in their opening game. A cross-section of football fans said that they were very disappointed with the performance of the Falcons and singled out Azizet Oshola for criticism, saying that he failed to bring her A game into the match and let her teammate down at critical moment in the game. In another update, former Anis head coach Christopher Galtier has named Paris Saint-Germain new manager after the departure of Mauricio Pochettino. Galtier has signed a two-year deal until the summer of 2024. A statement said Paris Saint-Germain confirmed that Pochettino has ended his role at the club after just eight months in charge. And on tennis, Tatjana Maria reached her first Grand Slam semi-final today with a comeback victory over Julia Nehemia at Wimbledon. Maria beat her German compatriot 4-6, 6-2, 7-5 in a high-quality encounter. She will face either third seed Ons Jabir, the highest ranked player left in the draw, or Maria Boscova next. Mohamed Sanuba, Freedom Radio. The global news is coming to you from Freedom Radio 99.5 FM. You can send your comments, opinions, and watch us live on Freedom Radio Nigeria on Facebook.com. You can get the link to the page on our website, freedomradio.nig.com. <laughs> Freedom, 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 freedom. freedom. Into Freedom Global News on 99.5 FM. The United Nations International Children's Fund has confirmed Sokoto State as one of the few states that has obtained a roadmap for the successful implementation of social protection activities. UNICEF official Malam Isa Ibrahim stated this during the Joint Sustainable Development Goals Social Protection Project close out meeting with stakeholders in Sokoto. He explained that with successful achievements recorded at the end of the project, the state government has obtained a clear guide and policy direction of social protection activities with clear targets of vulnerable persons in the state. According to him, the complete framework on ground and competent government personnel empowered with the right skills during the closed project, UNICEF is confident that even without developmental partners, Sokoto government will implement successful social protection program without sourcing for external support. He added that the United Nations considers Sokoto State to pilot social protection scheme in recognition of the poverty index from authorities which rated the state among high prevalence areas. The Emu of Bichi has commended Nine Mobile for their contribution to education in the state and country at large. The Emu of Bichi and Haji Nasur Adu Bayeru city this today at a career counseling program to Bichi students. Respondents of our Tijani Adam reports. The Emir of Bichi, Alhaji Nasra Adu Bayeru, added that the contribution made by Nine Mobile to education sector is a great achievement in the state and the country at large. He said the system offered by Nine Mobile is commendable, given the fact that many students do not know what course to study before entering university and colleges. 
Alhaji Nasr Ado Bayero said the nine mobile event had eased the burden on the community and further highlighted the contribution of Kano State and the BTM Red in education. Nine mobile public relations officer Chinezi Amampo said they had chosen Kano State as one of the states in the country to support education. She noted that Kano State is among the states visited by nine mobile in the Northwest, where the government has been very supportive of their business. Careers and building careers don't happen in a day planning it requires a lot of thinking a lot of thoughts to be put behind them that is where they decide if they are going to go into the sciences or into the arts so that's where their career paths are unfolded that's why we started career counseling we started with a few years ago but we need to find out if the, that location needs what we have to offer it's a give and take you need to be sure that this is their need Alaji Babangida Abu Bakar Mukaddas, the head of business at Nine Mobile Northwest said the initiative is aimed at boosting the education sector and for me I chose the topic of uh, sales because um, I'm a sales professional so we chose the sales i chose sales to be able to guide people that want to have their career in sales to know what it takes it is not just about uh, studying there are a lot of things that are required there are certain qualities where you can work what are the career opportunities so that they know from now i've been issue that these are the opportunities for one if they study process that will take them to become sales professional the students who attended the event in Bichi also spoke on how the program has benefited them and how it will in fact their future coming up nine mobile is help me for i want to be a medical doctor not physics chemistry biology i am happy i, I want to become a doctor thank you nine mobile thank you nine mobile for liking us the event was attended by some students from the beach girls school and the beach foundation where writing materials were distributed to help them suffer out and other freedom with you and on business, we have Sanyo Saad Zakiri with updates. The outgoing Secretary General of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC Mohamed Barkindo, has expressed confidence that the war is over and future looks very promising for the organization having survived the major turbulences between 2016 and 2020. He spoke on Tuesday when he was received by President Mohamed Buhari at the State House in Abuja. He recalled how the council from President Mohamed Buhari helped in the button of declaration of cooperation of OPEC and non-OPEC oil producing countries after he assumed office in vienna austria in 2016 during a downturn in the sector when oil prices plunged to less than 10 us dollars per barrel the former opec secretary general noted that the declaration of cooperation which is now in its sixth year also helped the organization to navigate the turbulence in the market occasioned by the covid 19 pandemic in 2020. meanwhile the infrastructure concession regulatory commission is planning to gather 53 eligible and bankable public private partnership projects valued at 22 billion dollars in 2022. acting director general and chief executive officer icrc michael ohiani disclosed this during the africa public private partnership network investment summit 2022 held in abuja on monday he further disclosed that the icrc had issued 128 outlined business case compliance certificates till date noting that these were certified bankable project and the certificate will enable them to proceed to the procurement in face he said between 2010 and 2021 under the regulatory guidance of the icrc the nigerian government had approved ppp project worth more than nine billion dollars noting that in 2021 the agency published a pipeline of 51 eligible and bankable ppp project valued at 17 billion dollars according to him the list contained the project from different economic sectors which has been granted the outline businesses case compliance certificate but which did not have identified bidders. Samira Saad Zakiri, Freedom Radio. And on the foreign scene, armed attackers have killed at least 22 civilians in northwest Burkina Faso. The latest deadly incident in an uptick in violence in the region. According to local officials, the latest attack occurred late on Sunday into early Monday morning in the province of Kosi about 55 kilometers from the border of arrestive central Mali. Regional Governor Bobo Pia Basinga said in a statement that the provisional death toll of this terrorist attack is 22. 
and several wounded with material damage. The statement added that military forces have been deployed to the scene and measures are in place to host those who fled to nearby cities. The situation in Mali has worsened since the separatist movement began in the country's north in June. 2012. In recent years, armed groups, including those linked to ISIL group and Al-Qaeda, have jockeyed for influence in the results in security vacuum in Mali's central regions, while exacerbating communal tensions driven by climate change. And with this, we've come to the end of today's Global News. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Hawa Adam Kiawa. Have a wonderful evening. This is 99.5 FM. Freedom, 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 freedom.